Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. Today, I'm going to pretend to know what Carnivale is. Because, Harper, you don't know what the Carnivale is? Not quite. It has something to do with Mardi Gras, but in Europe, and there are masks and stuff. It's a time to eat fried desserts. Yes, and this is what you need to know about Carnivale, because it's the period of the year in which you can eat all the fried desserts that you want. <laughs> which one are we making today? Today we are going to make one of the most classical Carnivale desserts in Italy, and the name is Castagnole. Before we begin, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action who made this absolutely adorable Jello di Melone. It's one of our favorite desserts. It's so simple to make. You should check out the video here. If you want to become a pasta grammarian, then hit that subscribe button. And if you try any of these recipes, tag us on social media, at Pasta Grammar. Okie dokie, this looks pretty simple. This is a pretty simple uh, recipe, Harper. What we have in front of us? All right, I'm looking at some flour. Flour. I assume all purpose. Si. Salt, eggs, butter, Water or vinegar? Water? Water. Water. Not vinegar. <laughs> That'd be a weird dessert. And some powdered sugar. Powdered sugar. I couldn't actually smell that it was powdered sugar. Was just... Nice powdered sugar. This uh, is just for dusting. And we have some sunflower oil for frying. It's better if you don't use olive oil because the olive oil has a strong taste. You want so, like a neutral yes. oil. So Harper, the first step to do the castagnole, in this case Roman style, because in Italy we have a lot of kind of castagnole, but I choose to make the Roman style. You need to make a pate choux. That sounds complicated in French. Yes, it's French, but it's not complicated. Okay. That's the, that's the sort of thing that I see on like Gordon Ramsay shows where they're like, pate choux, pate choux. <laughs> Everybody's gotta make the pate choux. Oh my God, I gotta make pate choux. What am I gonna do with the pate choux? So today you are going to make the pate choux. Okay. Pour the water in this pot. Easy. And I'm done. The butter in this pot. Okay. And a pinch of salt. Pinch of salt. A pinch of salt. That. Perfect. Turn on the heat, uh, medium temperature. And what you are looking for is melting the butter and bring the water boiling, to boil. So I'm pretty much just waiting. But more or less, yes. <laughs> what if the water boils before the butter is melted? It's not possible, Harper. Challenge accepted. I remember when I lived in Rome, because I lived in Rome for, I lived in Rome for a lot of time, I had the home uh, on the top up of a bakery shop, a pasticceria, what we call pasticceria. And during Carnevale, the pasticcere made always uh, stuffed castagnole. And when I was, uh, while I was studying, I always smell this wonderful smell of fried dessert. And guess what? I always close the book and go down to eat the castagnole. Pate choux, pate choux, do you do the pate choux? <laughs> He's focused on melting the butter. Okay, the butter is melted, so now we're just waiting for it to boil. Now we need to bring water to boil, and as soon as it starts to boil, be ready. When it starts to boil the water, yes, the flour all in once and stir with this. I'm just sitting here waiting for butter water to okay, boil. Okay, look, it's boiling. Oh, it it's is. It's boiling. Should I put it in? All. Stir. Okay, okay. Stir. Stir very well. Okay, I'm stirring. And you need to cook this until it becomes smooth and one piece. Now I see where the stress is. Pate choux, pate choux, got to make the pate choux. What do you think? I will uh, stir for another minute to okay. cook the flour. Okay, you don't see any clumps, right? No, nope, no clumps. No clumps. So you can turn off the heat. Boom. And then you need to spread the dough a little bit in the pot and let it cool down. Like spread it flat? See, si, flat. So it will cool down before. Oh, okay. Just like that? Like that. Now we need just to let it cool down a little bit. Okay. So, do you think that it's so stressed to make this pate choux? No, that was actually pretty easy. <laughs> so, you know what? I don't really understand why all these big chefs 
they create all this, uh, I don't know, how do you say, feeling that people, they can't cook because it's, it's so easy. Feels warm now, but not hot. Okay, so if it's warm, but not hot, we start to incorporate our eggs. One egg at a time, after. this is very important. Don't break all the eggs in once. One at a time, and when the first egg is incorporated, you will do the second one. So, so I break it in, stir it in. Yes. Okay. There's one. Ugh. Maybe we need to work a little bit more on the... I'm sorry, I did not choose the smallest saucepan possible. That is not my fault. Now I would say it's well incorporated. Another egg. Number two. Who is the first person who thought to do this? Ask Siri. Hey Siri, where does pata choux come from? Pata chow was born in Paris. Hey Siri. Who invented pata shoe? I found some web results. I'll send them to Harper's iPhone. No, that's not. I couldn't find Harper's iPhone, but you can ask me again from there. Thank you, very helpful. Okay, I think that's well incorporated. Number three. Okay. Can you imagine in this wonderful French patisserie, in the back there is Antonio Giuseppe. Salvatore, Gino, Rocco, and then they say it's a French invention. Uh, let's go and see who is cooking. Oh, this is very much thickening up. See, that is what Whoa. we are looking for. Last but not least. I'm glad the recipe does not call for five eggs because if so, we would really be testing the limits of what this little saucepan can do. I'm so proud of you, Arthur, that you are making your first pate choux. You did a great job. Okay, so now that our pate choux is ready, mm -hmm. what we need to do, we need to fry it. So it's not sweet. No, we will make it sweet, stuffing them and put some powdered sugar on mm. top. Okay, I'm gonna start pouring oil in, you tell me when. Go after. I'm gonna put all this oil in, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, because it's very important when you fry that you fry it with a lot of oil. And this uh, makes uh, the fried food uh, much, much better. And it also avoids uh, that the food absorb oil. It's actually not that much, it's only like an inch. And I'm assuming like medium high temperature. Medium high temperature. Now, the right temperature to fry our pata is 170 degrees Celsius. Hey. What is 170 Celsius in Fahrenheit? 170 degrees Celsius is 338 degrees Fahrenheit. But because we are not going to use a thermometer, we can use our feeling to understand when the oil is ready for frying. And how we will do this, we will take a very small quantity of our pot of choux, put there, if we start to fry, the oil is ready. Easy. There's only one time in my life before I met you that I attempted to deep fry something. I think it was fried jalapeno chips or jalapeno poppers, something like that. It was the only time I'd ever deep fried something and the recipe I found made it seem so complicated. They're like, you need thermometers and you need to carefully monitor the temperature. And it like stressed me out and I bought like a special thermometer and used way too much oil. Like I could have just used this, but I used like a full pot of oil and it was insane, and I was like, I'm never frying again. And then I met you, and you fry like as casually as if you're popping something in the microwave. I know that uh, fried food though, is not always good for your health, but once you decide to eat fried food, it's much better if you fry at home, because you use a new oil, you know what you are doing. While if you go in this big chain with all the fried food, they are using that oil maybe from uh, one year ago, so. Do you think we should test the oil? A small, small amount. Nope. 
you want it to like start to kind of bubble and fry it as soon as it hits the oil, right? Should I try again? Okay. So Alper, now what you need to do is, we, using the two spoon, you need to take some pata uh -huh. try to make a small bowl, and deep fry. Okay. Maybe this is too much, okay. Like that? See? Whoa, huh. maybe you should have done that lower. Do you? Oh, another? Eh, uh, si, we need to fry them. Okay, I thought this was kind of a one at a time type no, deal. No, no, Albert. How's that? Perfect. This is pretty easy. It's very easy. So now, Arper, uh, try to check uh, the color. To, we don't want them burn. Golden, not burn. This is very important. You made a wonderful pate So You see how they are fluffy? They seem fluffy. They may be too fluffy. Look at this they one, are, it's splitting. Maybe that two are too big, but it doesn't really matter. These are huge. They just keep Castagnoli. getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> Can you understand how amazing they are when you bite them? Harper, I think that uh, they are uh, so they're ready? ready. You okay. can take them out. So I assume the next batch I should maybe try a little bit smaller. Try to make a little bit smaller, but uh, let's be honest, nothing against them bigger. All right, guys, well, I've got a fair bit of uh, pate dough to fry, so uh, we'll speed things up and we'll be back with you when I'm done. Ta-da! We've got a big plate of fresh castagnole in front of us. They are not castagnole yet, because now we need to stuff them. And Arpa, I need to say that you did a great job because they, they look, look good. very, very good. This morning, Arpa, I prepared a custard. It's a very simple custard. We will post also the recipe for this. And I made this this morning because we need it completely cold. You need to make a small hole in each castagnola. Okay, perfect. Oh, just an, oh, it's like empty inside. See, it's empty. I don't know empty. if you can see that. And then Harper. Oh, I'm gonna pipe it in. See? Now we are doing this with a simple custard, but you can also stuff the castagnole, for example, with a sweet ricotta. You can also stuff the castagnole with a custard, a chocolate custard, with the Nutella. Is a good custard? Okay. All right, well, I'm gonna fill all of these and then we'll be back again, okay? Now we have finished castagnole, right? Now we have the castagnole ripiene di crema. Happy ah. carnavale. Buon appetito. I may be biased, but I think I did a good job. You did an amazing job. Carnavale is once a year, so why not? Guys, we hope you enjoyed this video and we also hope you have a very merry carnivale. Give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao.